Great. We're halfway through our pitches. Uh, next up is Emily Gullerud from Mathematics presenting on creating artistic designs using hyperbolic geometry. <laughs> Hello, my name is Emily Gullerud, and I work at the intersection of mathematics and art. More specifically, I create computer-generated mathematical art utilizing certain types of symmetry. How I do this is the following. I start with a source image, which can be an image of whatever you'd like, possibly a picture of Chancellor Jim. And then you set up a blank image, which is just full of black pixels. You then establish a function, which maps the pixels from the source image to the black image. You can think of this, uh, the black image as a canvas, and your source image as a palette of paint colors. And then the function that you choose just tells you where to paint each of the pixels. This is similar to a uh, color by numbers, perhaps. And depending on what kind of function I pick, I'll have certain types of symmetry within the design, such as this one has translational and mirror symmetry, and other ones can also have rotational symmetry. Previous work on creating these types of mathematical art has been computationally expensive. So I devised a method using uh, properties from number theory in order to make my designs much more quickly. Another thing that people have done in the past with these designs is let themselves be restricted to Euclidean geometry, whereas I utilize hyperbolic geometry. Now, what are these terms, Euclidean and hyperbolic geometry? Well, we live in a world governed by Euclidean geometry, where if you take two points in space, say me and the provost, the shortest distance between us is going to be a straight line. However, if we were living in a world governed by hyperbolic geometry, the shortest distance between us is either going to be a straight line or it's going to be some sort of curve like a semicircle. These are called geodesics. In terms of this image here, the geodesics are going to be vertical lines coming out from the bottom of the image or they're going to be semicircles where the center of the circle is going to be at the bottom of the image. Another thing that we did new with these designs is, like I said before, our source image could be whatever we wanted. So why not use one of these designs as our source image? And that's exactly what we did. You can think of this as taking your favorite um, art piece, such as the Mona Lisa, perhaps, and just using colors from that in order to make another design. And this has never been done before using mathematical art. Our work has impacts in both the mathematical and artistic communities. Much of our work uh, has significant ties to complex analysis, which is a fundamental field of mathematics that most undergraduates study, undergraduate mathematics majors, that is. Our work is going to be featured in a complex analysis handbook to be published in 2019. And also, our images can be used as visual tools for teaching complex analysis to undergraduate mathematics students. As far as the artistic communities go, there actually is a very large and thriving mathematical art community throughout the world. And this piece, entitled Blue Gold Fireworks, was featured at a mathematical art exhibit at a national mathematic mathematics conference in January in San Diego, California. And I hope to have more of my art featured in these exhibits throughout the world. Thank you. Oh, no, actually, it doesn't have to do with the power of and. This was a picture of um, some buoys sitting on a dock. It was just a stock image I found online. <laughs> 